Yeah, you typically want your players to get player of the week. You don't want your field goal kicker to be special teams player of the week because that means he carried the day as he did week one against Atlanta when he scored all of the points, six field goals. Six field goals, all of the points on Sunday in an 18-16 win field over the goal Ravens. Kicker in the game. That came down to a failed two-point conversion yeah. by the Ravens. Yeah. But he's he's the man. I think he's the best in the game. He's overtaken, you know, Justin Tuck, who but, we've seen had struggles. Justin Tucker's in the lower yeah, quartile Tucker, of the lower quartile. He's, he's definitely struggling there. And you know, there's a few other guys that challenge Boswell, but he's he's special that way. And for a team that plays defensive, low scoring type of football games, field goal field goal kicker is important. And they showed that yesterday. That was an awesome win for the Steelers. It's amazing how easily you can lose that groove. Yes, as a kicker, it's it's a, gets in your head. Gets in your head. Can be a little mechanical sometimes. All of that, you know. Again, you you do the same thing over and over, hundreds and hundreds times a week. You can it can cause little issues with your body where there's imbalances, and sometimes you can get off that way. So uh, yeah, he's he's off, and him missing two early field goals in the first half. The Ravens making mistakes all together. I think would probably be the theme of the day. The Steelers played a cleaner brand of football. I think that's just the way to say it. The, the Ravens maybe had more highlights and maybe more highlight plays, but the Steelers' defense had a few more highlight plays, whether it was the missed field goals, the strip of Isaiah Likely, right, the interception, taking the ball out of Justice Hill's that was hands key. in a big moment. That was key because the huge. turning point was potentially right. the Russell Wilson Stupid scramble around, let Russ right. cook, playing hero ball. That's one of the reasons why they want to give Justin Fields a little time. They like that he played some. They hope that keeps Russell Wilson from trying to do too much. He tried to do too much on that play because you're in a spot where you throw it away, you take three points, and you basically make it. You don't need a touchdown there no, to put the dagger in the race. That's Ravens. right. You go up by eight right there. Yeah. They could have gone up by eight. And then, yeah, no, you know, then you hopefully you make a stop or whatever else, and maybe you can kick another field goal and go, hey, we're up by 11 now. Uh, I mean, that's what the Steelers are. They don't want to do that type of stuff. I understood what Russell Wilson was trying to do on that interception. He has a huge tight end in Washington sitting there back, boxing out Marlon Humphrey, but he just throws it way too high and basically throws it over Washington's head to where he has no chance to make a play on the ball. But that interception happened after it, which was a great yeah, play. Yeah, the next drive, right. They yeah. were, you kind of like went, oh, Four okay, plays here later. go the Ravens, here they come. And he's got one-on-one, -on -one, Justice Hill running a little wheel route up the left sideline against Peyton Wilson. And Wilson, I mean, it's unfortunate it's an interception for Lamar Jackson because he threw the ball on the money. Justice Hill caught the ball, but Peyton Wilson had his hand in there as they were going to the ground. And Justice Hill never secured it completely, and, 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 and Wilson got to rip it out of there and get the interception in a big moment. And I'm sorry, it was three plays later. And think of how that drive started. Lamar ran for 25 yards to the 45. Right. They had a pass that came back because there was an illegal man downfield, and it was that next play. And it felt like they were clicking. It felt like they got that kick in the ass, the momentum that comes from you feel like, okay, they're going to go up by eight. We're going to have our work cut out for us. We get a gift, and we're going to turn that into points. Yeah. And it felt like they were doing that up until that great play. That's how the Steelers that's do how they. That's how they do it. Steelers-Ravens games, it's like the numbers fall off the jersey. It's – always the same it doesn't matter who's playing it is incredible you know yesterday's even more incredible to me though why it really well th this rate this is the ravens their offense is arguably the best offense in football we've talked about it. it's them or the lions and the fact that they could do that to them with the way lamar has been playing through the first 11 weeks is i i, I that's where i'm shocked by it Right. I thought we'd see a few more plays from the Ravens on that side of the ball. It makes me think differently about the Steelers. It does. And the Steelers and the way they could corral Lamar Jackson, they, we never really saw a whole lot of magical plays from him. He's always going to make a few, don't get me wrong, but not nearly what we usually see. A lot of moments of fading away and having to throw the ball away. Not a lot of big explosive plays down the field. The Steelers play a little bit better man-to-man -man defense than I think I've given them credit for here in the early part of the year. Um, but yeah, I was still surprised that they did that to that offense with all these weapons because there's no excuses with this Ravens offense. They got everything. And here's what's wild. We hear the stories, and and I think it's accurate, about how Lamar Jackson has run roughshod over the NFC because they never see him. They don't know what they're dealing with. Yes. They don't know how to properly right. defend him. The Steelers only played him five times yeah. in six years. Yeah. But they know what to do. They see him on film a lot. 
Yes, they've had you know long weeks of practice. Some of the backups for the Ravens have also been athletic guys, so they go, well, it's the same with that. And I do think them playing Jaden Daniels last week was a good warm-up practice, practice session for Lamar Jackson. It's like, hey, you know, we got to play, we're going to play, you know, one superhero this week, but then we're going to go to Superman. So, yeah, Jaden Daniels, it, it helped them. It was a lot of the similar things. You watch back that game, you go, man, the Steelers weren't afraid to blitz Lamar Jackson. They sent five, and I think that's kind of the new thing uh, as far as maybe what to do against him a little bit. Get five guys there. Don't really rush him. That's the thing you watch, too. It was kind of mush the pocket, right? We saw that a little bit. Nobody was flying by Lamar Jackson behind him to open up these big rush lanes. So throughout the day, he'd get the ball and try to find somewhere to go, but there was nowhere to go. And the Steelers, I think, getting to do that last week against Jaden Daniels in Washington, carrying that over to this week like you're talking about, and then the experience they have against Lamar, I think really helped, and it showed yesterday. The Steelers had also bottled up Derrick Henry in three prior games against him. He hadn't had more than 75 rushing yards he had 65 yesterday he did have a touchdown yeah. he is a touchdown machine but he just had that one big run he had really, the big run right? and they tripped him up or that would have been another that, touchdown yes right right the the offense for the ravens has been spectacular and the steelers just knew how to to slow it down enough that and that's all it is for the steelers points yeah. scored versus points allowed they yeah. managed to score two more points it came down to that two-point conversion i still don't know what they were doing there it looked like it was run all the way yeah. with no pass yeah. option one of the things we always hear and see and say in a setting like that, when you have a dynamic quarterback, you give him a run and a pass option, so you've got some flexibility. So if one's not there, you can do the other. And he did throw it at the end, but it felt more like desperation. Yeah. I know there's no way I'm getting this ball across. Let's just take a chance and maybe we'll get no, lucky. No, no, I'm, I'm with you too, though. I don't know if there was a, like Isaiah Likely or one of the tight ends on that side of the ball was supposed to block and then it kind of release out. But they were trying to create – hey, we're going to do something to the right. We're going to run a reverse to the right. I think it was with Zay Flowers in motion. They pulled a lineman or two to go to the right, and then Lamar kept the ball going left with some blockers in front of him, and it was not there. The Steelers were ready for him to keep the football. The one thing I'll say about the Ravens and where I'd like to see them, and they lose their way with this a little bit, is even yesterday, and you just brought it up, I do think they need to run the ball more again. They get into these little – because offense has been so easy and they're so explosive and awesome throwing the football, I feel like yesterday was a day of a little bit like, no, no, we don't need to throw it 33 times and we don't need to throw for less than 50%. Let's run the ball a few more times with Derrick Henry, a few more quarterback design runs with Lamar Jackson, and play off of that. It felt like the Steelers played for the pass game. They played to let me stop Lamar running and doing all that. And I feel like the Ravens get going on offense sometimes and they kind of forget their traditional run game. And they literally just go, wait, we're so good and he's at quarterback. We'll make plays other ways. And I still think they're at their best when they run the football and then it opens up everything that way. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.